This is one of a series of short videos designed to support and enhance your understanding of some of the key concepts contained within A-Level Further Mathematics. If you have already mastered the basics of a topic, then the video should stimulate your thinking and provide further insight. The focus is on looking in a bit more depth at examples that can be tackled using the knowledge gained within the curriculum. These examples are not taken from any particular exam specification and as such may go beyond what you need to know for your examinations. However, they all illustrate key concepts that will help you by giving you a more thorough understanding. In this video, I'm going to look at the roots of quadratic equations in a bit more depth using what you will have learned about complex numbers. So you'll already know lots about quadratic equations and their roots. You'll have used factorization, the quadratic formula, completing the square, You'll know about complex numbers, complex roots of quadratic equations. You'll have learned about complex conjugates. You'll have learned also about the roots and coefficients, the relationship between the sums and products of roots and coefficients. And you may have seen algebraic methods for finding the square roots of complex numbers. So I'm going to assume that you're relatively familiar with all of those things. So we're very familiar with solving quadratic equations with real coefficients. So if we have something in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, a, b and c are the coefficients. And in this example, a is 1, b is 2 and c is 2. And we'd solve this using either the quadratic formula or completing the square. But what I'd like to do in this video is look at a quadratic equation where one of the coefficients is a complex number. So in this case, my coefficient of x squared a is equal to 1, my coefficient of x b is equal to 2, and my constant coefficient c is equal to minus 2 minus 4i, and this is a complex number. So let's take a look at solving this equation. I'm going to use completing the square. So in the same way as normal, I'm going to introduce x plus 1 squared, which gives me the x squared plus 2x. I need to subtract 1, and then I've got my minus 2, minus 4i, and this is equal to 0. So tidying this up, I end up with x plus 1 squared is equal to 3 plus 4i. If I take the square root of both sides now, I get x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 plus 4i. And in order to complete this, I need to remember how to calculate the square root of 3 plus 4i. And I'm going to do this on a separate sheet just to remind myself. So the algebraic method for finding the square root of a complex number is to set the square root of 3 plus 4i equal to a plus bi. So this complex number here is the square root of 3 plus 4i. To solve this, I'm going to square both sides of the equation. So on this side, expanding out, I get a squared plus 2abi then I get plus b squared i squared, and remembering that i squared is minus 1, I end up with minus b squared. And on this side, if I square the square root of 3 plus 4i, I simply get 3 plus 4i. The left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side, and so we can compare real and complex coefficients and deduce that a squared minus b squared must be equal to. 3 and 2ab must be equal to 4. I'm going to call this equation 1 and this equation 2. So from 2 I can write that b is equal to 4 divided by 2a so that's 2 over a. And I'm going to substitute this into equation number 1 so that a squared minus, well b squared is simply 4 over a squared is equal to 3 
And from this, if I multiply the whole equation by a squared, I get that a to the 4 minus 4 is equal to 3a squared. And I'm just going to divide the page to give myself a bit more room there. So continuing now, if I write a to the power 4 minus 3a squared minus 4 is equal to 0, I can see that this will factorise with an a squared and an a squared and a 4 and a 1 minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 0 so that either a squared is equal to 4 or a squared is equal to minus 1. It was implicit in our original setup that a and b were real numbers so I can ignore this solution here and I know that a is equal to plus or minus 2. So when a is equal to 2 I can substitute back into b is equal to 2 over a and I get that b is equal to 1 and when a is equal to negative 2 same thing again I end up with b is equal to negative 1 so that my final conclusion is that the square root of 3 plus 4i is equal to and there are two solutions and I can write it as plus or minus 2 plus i. So I'd get 2 plus i or minus 2 minus i as my two solutions. Turning to the solution of my quadratic equation, I can now write x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus and I've got plus or minus 2 plus i. And from this I get x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2 plus i. Because the adjacent plus or minus signs essentially boil down to just one plus or minus sign. Continuing, I end up with x is equal to subtract 1 from both sides. I end up with minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus i. And if I write these roots out separately, I have either x is equal to minus 1 plus 2 is 1 plus i or x is equal to minus 1 minus 2 gives me negative 3 and then a negative i. So I get two solutions. x is either equal to 1 plus i or minus 3 minus i. And what I think is really interesting about this is the fact that these are not complex conjugates. In quadratic equations with real coefficients, where a, b and c were all real, you'll be familiar with the fact that we always get complex roots in conjugate pairs. As soon as any of the coefficients are complex, we end up with roots that are no longer occurring in complex conjugate pairs, and I think that's really interesting. A further interest is how this fits in with the roots and coefficients of polynomials and the properties that we know. Conventionally the roots of a quadratic are called alpha and beta and we know that the sum of those roots is equal to minus b over a and the product of those roots is equal to c over a. So in this case we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2 and c is equal to minus 2 minus 4i. So we can write alpha plus beta for our equation is equal to minus 2 over 1, which gives us minus 2, and alpha beta for our equation is equal to c over a, so minus 2 minus 4i, because a is 1. Quite like to look at the roots that I've actually found and try to verify these properties. So I'm going to use alpha is equal to 1 plus i, which is my first root, and beta is equal to minus 3 minus i, which was my second root. And just verify that if I sum those roots, alpha plus beta is 1 plus i minus 3 minus i, which in total gives me negative 2 because the i's cancel, and alpha times beta 
gives me 1 plus i multiplied by minus 3 minus i and with a little bit more working I get minus 3 minus i minus 3i then I get minus i squared but remembering that i squared is minus 1 I end up with plus 1 and I end up with altogether minus 2 minus 4i and both of these match what I know about the properties of the roots and although it's more common to be asked to solve a quadratic equation with real coefficients I think that solving one with a complex coefficient using the methods that you already know gives you a real flavour of the depth of this topic and a real insight into how well you understand the principles.